Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back for some more Kerbal Crashing Adventures. Version 0.14 has finally dropped, and for those of us that have paid for the, the pre-order, or the donation, we can now download it from the site. The big new feature in this one is the persistent state in the universe. Now when you launch stuff into space and return to the launch pad, uh, it will, the bits will stay up there and you can track them on your, your map overview. You can switch between the entities and so on and so forth. And this means that in theory you can now perform one of the critical features of the Apollo missions. You can try and rendezvous and dock in orbit. Now, well, I say dock, but there aren't any official parts that make this easy at this time. So with this in mind, I decided to make a video guide to show you people how it's done. Now my target is already in orbit, it's a standard orbiter, if you've never put something in orbit before you should go back and watch the actually getting stuff into orbit videos because this requires a whole lot more patience than simply getting a thing into orbit. My only real piece of advice that uh, is relevant here is if you're putting a target into orbit it's a really good idea to make sure that it's above at least 150 kilometers uh, or even higher. The main reason is that you're going to use time acceleration a lot for the run and if you're not above 150 kilometers you're stuck to like 10 times time acceleration and you will kill yourself through the boredom. This launcher is more than a little over engineered. I really wanted to make sure I had lots of fuel in orbit so there are four liquid fuel uh, boosters strapped around the outside and they of course feed their excess fuel into the middle uh, and we also have a, an RCS system with three RCS fuel tanks because I anticipate that we could be doing a lot of uh, finicky maneuvering once we're actually trying to rendezvous. This is an otherwise standard launch profile. The main aim is we're going to head to the east and try and get into an orbit of about 160 kilometers. Now the target is an 172 kilometer orbit and as you can see from the map uh, I chose probably the worst time to launch because it is practically on the other side of the planet. But that's okay because I've made sure there's enough food, oxygen and of course urine bags for our intrepid astronauts who you might have noticed uh, no longer simply uh, Bob, Jeb and Bill because of course they're already in orbit, waiting to meet the newest additions to the Kerbal Space Program, Don Frey, Gus, and Matmund, Kerman. So anyway, the aim is to get into a nice circular orbit, but not at the same altitude as the thing you're trying to rendezvous with. The target is about 150 degrees ahead of me around the orbit, so the aim is that we're going to go into a lower altitude orbit, about 160 kilometers, and because that orbit is shorter and closer to Kerbin, we are going to catch up every orbit. We're going to get closer and closer. Now, if the target is lagging behind you, of course, the best plan is to go into a higher altitude orbit so that they catch up on you. If you get it wrong, it's not fatal. It just means that you're going to be waiting longer and you might have to make corrections in orbit. You did bring enough fuel to make corrections in orbit, right? Because one of the first corrections that you're going to have to make after you're getting your ship into a nice uh, circular orbit is going to be to get the planes aligned. You can see here that because the orbits aren't aligned, the spacecraft will oscillate above and below each other during each orbit. So the plan is to find where the orbits cross and then thrust either in the normal or the anti-normal direction. Now what are the normal and anti-normal directions, I hear you ask? Well, as you are aware, we live in a three-dimensional universe and uh, there are three dimensions, generally defined by X, Y and Z. Or more colloquially, on the surface of the Earth we have up, down, left, right and back and forwards. Now when you're in orbit, the directions are defined by up and down, which we're familiar with, and then if you've done any orbital maneuvering, you're going to know about the prograde and retrograde directions. Those are marked on your nav ball. These are the important ones if you're changing your uh, orbit, you want to thrust along these. And so the direction that nobody talks about, which is used for plane change maneuvers, are your normal and anti-normal. If you're in an equatorial orbit, then these actually correspond to uh, due north and due south. If that sounds like a lot of complicated technical terms, that's because it is. But really, conceptually, it's pretty easy. You're just trying to correct two orbits that aren't quite lined up. And when the main time to thrust is when the two orbits cross. So you have two points that so you can correct this, and you'll just do it a little at a time on each orbit. And this is important because if you're not aligned, every time you pass near to the other spacecraft, you're going to be approaching it at a much higher velocity. Anyway, we've got these aligned and now the waiting happens. 
we just turn on time acceleration and assuming that we've picked a good altitude, we will start to approach the other target in orbit. And this is going to take a really long time, many, many, many orbits. Again, this is why you probably want to do this at least above 150 kilometers, because doing this at lower time accelerations is terribly boring. In terms of real gameplay time, this whole thing took about an hour, but in terms of mission elapsed time, it shows about 10 hours on the clock when I finally get into a position to rendezvous. Now, any of you familiar with orbital mechanics will realize that the rate at which we catch up with the other vehicle will depend upon the differences in our altitudes. So once we get within spitting distance of this other vehicle, the plan is that we're going to boost into a higher altitude orbit, much closer to our target. Now, of course, this is a two-step process. The first burn will be used to raise our apple key, and then we're going to have to wait half an orbit, during which we're still going to be orbiting faster than the target. Then we're going to circularize it halfway around. So uh, don't be surprised if you overshoot or miss the first time. Indeed, that's what I did here. So I decided to lift the whole thing to a higher altitude orbit now so that they would start to catch up on me. So now we're getting pretty close to our target, we can actually find it visually. In visual mode, you can see a nice little magenta uh, finder here, which shows the distance as well. This is about 25 kilometers off. And you know, given that it's only 25 kilometers away and uh, this rocket still has a lot of power left in it, I was very tempted to head straight for it and, and then uh, just try and correct my orbit afterwards. But uh, discipline prevailed and I decided to basically shift myself into an orbit that was only one kilometer different from the target. Now, at this point, it also became apparent that the plane change maneuver was not precise enough and there was still quite a bit of oscillation between the planes. So uh, a little more fine tuning happens here before we start getting really close to the target. In a visual mode, of course, you can actually see the spacecraft oscillate back and forth so you can get a better idea of when you want to burn to correct. We're just going to keep adjusting the orbit using the map and using time acceleration to get closer and closer. And uh, once we're within a few kilometers, uh, at that point, then uh, you can basically dispense with the map and rely entirely on your own visuals. Once you get really close, RCS is really the only thing that's going to work for you because you're going to have to be doing a lot of really fine maneuvering. So yeah, with this ship, I basically uh, jettison the main engine. Although it's got tons of fuel left in it, it's just going to make maneuvering this thing a whole lot harder. And then it's a good idea to roll the spacecraft so that the nav ball kind of matches your view. It is a big problem, I think, with the, the RCS system that it's very hard to tell what direction your uh, ship is orientated. So it's quite common to hit, hit a button and then realize you have to immediately correct because you push the wrong one. I will completely admit that I am much more comfortable adjusting the orbits through the nat through the map than I am with these uh, fine maneuvers, but uh, yeah, it's got to be done. So yeah, here we are on a final approach. We're about 200 kilometers out. At uh, 200 meters, oh my goodness, yeah, uh, I'm off by a factor of a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not used to dealing with such short distances. So yeah, we're basically trying to keep everything aligned. We we're learning the RCS controls, relearning them every time I push them because the ship tends to move around every time you hit the button. I I've heard that uh, auto SAS will help keep your ship from pointing because RCS tends to introduce roles that are unintended. Um, that is my main barrier, I think, for dealing with this. But yeah, 150 kilometers. Now you see the site has 150 meters. The site has now disappeared. And we get a nice quick burn, and look, there it is. There is my other rocket. I mean, you can practically reach out and touch it. Uh, I just got to make sure I don't crash it. Oh, 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 wow. Okay, so I guess I flew past it. And now I'm going to try and figure out how to get back to it. And, uh, okay, I really don't want to turn the camera because that will mess up my internal uh, notion of what way, what way everything's facing, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it unless I turn the camera. Okay, so uh, there we are. We actually uh, overshot quite a bit. Uh, this is space. There is nothing to stop you, no atmosphere to stop you. Let's uh, just try and... Well, I'm going to rotate it round again. And, uh, oh yeah, I, I should have rolled it at this point, I guess, to uh, get my, my head straight. But now we're going to try coming in again. I don't want to hit this too hard because it would really suck to hit it so hard that I broke my parachute. I have done that in the past. 
And uh, the RCS system does not have enough thrust to soft land unless you're using modded parts. There we go, 11 meters. Oh my goodness. That is uh, kind of crazy. You know, just realize that these two spacecraft will look like they're moving very slowly, but they're actually traveling at uh, 2.1 kilometers per second over the planet Kerbin. Look at that, eh? Now, I have seen people that have used one of the other new mods, the, uh, one of the new parts they added were lander legs for the space for, for landing on the moon. And uh, people have built spacecraft that have put these at the head of the ship. And there's a if you press the G key, the, the landing gear folds in and out. So they've turned this around and they actually built uh, a grapple with it. They built a spacecraft with claws at the head that can, in theory, grab a capsule from orbit. I've seen people rendezvous and grab a capsule i've not seen anyone successfully bring it back down to the planet but you know uh, hats off to those people that can do this so yeah that's us we have successfully taken a ship we've orbited for uh, 16 hours of game time we have rendezvoused in orbit and uh, if there was something interesting to do we would do it but instead i think what we're gonna do is just uh deorbit this ship and uh have a victory uh, parade back on the capital of Curb. Whatever that's called. I um, mean, I guess it's maybe Washington KC. So here we go. Let's deorbit this sucker. So, yeah, I tell you this tutorial is probably not the most uh, simple of them. It requires a lot of patience, a lot of time acceleration. But, you know, you just keep the principles in, in mind. If the target is ahead of you in its orbit, you want to be in a lower orbit. If they are behind you, then you want to be in a higher orbit. And as you get closer, you want to bring the orbits closer together. And once you're within, you know, a comfortable distance, you can manually fly these things together. Uh, but don't overshoot, don't crash, don't lose your parachute. And of course, don't forget to leave some comments if this works for you. I, I really hope to see some of you guys doing some uh, impressive stuff. Fly safe.